Flexi Chuck. G'day, I'm Phil from Phil Tech, and in this video, we're going to focus on the Flexi Chuck, a work holding system that we manufacture in collaboration with Eccentric Engineering. If you're not familiar with what the Flexi Chuck is, have a look at a previous video that we've pinned in the top comment. So, why is the Flexi Chuck so good? Why do we use it to manufacture or help manufacture our V12 model aeroplane engine? Let's take a closer look. Let's start with looking at the use of the Flexi Chuck on a milling machine or a machining centre. Here we have a Flexi Chuck with the standard base plate that we can provide uh, to have the Flexi Chuck mounted on a manual milling machine or in this circumstance a CNC machining centre. The one over here we've got has an extra um, plate on the bottom and that allows you to rotate the flexi chuck um, by loosening off the clamping arrangements on the side here and that's very handy if you've got a say a rectangular shaped um, fixture machined as the flexi chuck adapter and you can realign it by clocking it up off one of the flat sides. This is currently not in production but if you think it's a good idea and would be a good ad um, addition to our product range please let us know in the comments. This is the header tank for the coolant system on the V12 engine but regarding use of the flexi chuck it's the bottom part that I'm more interested in now how on earth would we go about making this it's thin walled down to a millimeter often it's a very odd shape ideal I think for a flexi chuck. So this is anyway how I went about it. I initially turned up an aluminium blank billet like that. I then put it in a three drawer chuck and milled the internal. So I ended up with a part that looked like that. I then milled a 100 mil adapter on my flexi chuck to the internal profile. I can then place that over the top like that, clamp it up, and now I'm ready to mill. And then we end up with a part that looks like that. This is a component of the V12 model engine. Um, it's got a thread on the inside here and also externally and a very funny shaped milled section or profile on the outside. So the way we've gone about deciding to make it is we turn up on the lathe a blank like this and it's got the thread on the inside but it doesn't have the thread on the outside and then we use a flexi chuck with a 50 mil adapter and we've machined the thread here to match the internal thread there we screw it on Band it, then we can mill that external profile quite readily, but we can also then take the adapter off the machining centre, put it onto the lathe, and we can screw cut the thread on the uh, external part. Here we have a small brass part off the model V12 engine 
and what we need to do is to drill these little holes we use a uh, slot drill actually to um, put them in but what we've decided to do is to use a 50 mil adapter on the flexi chuck um, internally screw cut that thread and if we expand it out we can screw it in like so let it contract we can drill those holes with a flexi chuck mounted on a manual milling machine a cylinder liner from the v12 model engine now to grab hold of this to be able to cut in the transfer and exhaust ports you could use other devices to uh, hold the uh, liner in the machining center but the advantage with the flexi chuck is we can also put a locating pin because we have to align with the little slot that you can see on the side there so and we also get of course the advantage that we know it's going to be concentric with the axis of the fourth axis on the machining center the rotary table because um, we have to spin this around to cut all the different ports so I found this to be a really easy way to uh, hang on to the cylinder liner. One of the big advantages of the flexi chuck is it grabs hold of the item by virtually the, the full circumference, just less the slots. So when you're doing a part like this made of plastic, which is always a bit tricky to hang on to, um, it's a really good way of doing it. So for instance, to make this part, we start off with a sawn off blank. We first hang on to a three jaw chuck, face the end, put the steps in it, bore it to size, and then we use the flexi chuck. So in this circumstance on my tooling lathe, I'm going to use the four morse adapter because that's a, a nice, precise, easy way of uh, fixing the flexi chuck to the spindle. And then we just lock it in position with a drawbar. So here we go, loading on the adapter. We put the part in so. Band it up to grab hold of it and off we go with our turning. We can now turn the OD and the face. Using a similar process to that we used for the plastic roller, on the CNC lathe we machined the external and the front face of our locking ring. So we turned a step in a 50mm adapter slid it on, expanded it up and we're able to yeah, machine the external and the front face. Obviously these slots were put in afterwards but it showed that a flexi chuck can grip well enough to machine a piece of high tensile steel because this is 4140. We need to grind the location spigot on the flexi chuck back plate. We used the Morse taper adapter on our flexi chuck because we know that that will align the flexi chuck very precisely with the spindle of the cylindrical grinder. You can see here we've got a 100 mil aluminium adapter, we've machined a recess at the front here. We're going to use that to locate on the back of the 
back plate. Band that, ready to grind. You can purchase the flexi chuck in a kit with a lot or as individual items. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning a bit more about the flexi chuck. If you want to know more about it, have a look at the website or ask questions in the comments below. Otherwise, remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. See you next time.